Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to have a look at the plant creatures and mounts for Kingdoms of Arda. I'm going to go through all the creatures we know from the world of Middle-earth, even if we don't include them in the mod. I will also try to answer why some of them won't be in the mod, and if we have made any changes to the plant creatures. Just to be clear, none of the creatures mentioned in this video will be something you can play as in the sandbox campaign. Let's dive right into it. Trolls will of course be in the mod, and there will also be various species for the creature, such as the Olokai we see a lot in the movie, that will wear armor and use iron weapons and the like. They will be the strongest of the trolls, and quite a challenge to take down. When hit by a troll you are meant to fly back a bit, but we haven't started to work on the specifics yet. The troll model you see is currently being remade by the same creator, so that it can look even better in the first release. The animations will be worked on when the model is done, which we hope will be very soon, of course. The other types of trolls cover mountain trolls, that will be the more common troll for some factions to have access to. Still a very strong creature, but without armor and with lower quality weapons. Still a challenge that can be near impossible to kill on your own. Then there are the cave trolls we know from Moria, that will also be available in other mountainous areas owned by orc factions. The cave trolls are a bit smaller than the other trolls, but can still be a huge challenge to face. One wrong move and it might squash you. Next we have the snow trolls, with its iconic white fur on the shoulders. You might know this type of troll from Battle for Middle-earth, Rise of the Witch King. They will only be available in more snowy and arctic areas of Middle-earth. Its size will be something between a mountain troll and a cave troll. It will be slightly stronger than the cave troll, but it will likely be more rare and I think only few factions will have access to it, such as the remnants of Angmar and Gundabad. There are other trolls we have talked about, such as hill trolls and stone trolls, but it's undecided if we will add them. If added, their strength will likely be closer to the cave troll. Some of you are probably looking forward to story mode, and if you don't know what story mode is, it's a whole new way of playing Bannerlord, so please don't make any assumptions, most people get it wrong when they just try to guess what it is. Instead, feel free to check out the video I've made about story mode. In story mode, you will be able to play as a troll for at least some missions and at least some parts of a scene. As you can imagine, the size of the troll can make it a little challenging to enter some areas of a scene. So that's one of the reasons why it's only available in some areas. The other reason is balance, of course. However, I think it will be quite an interesting experience to play as a troll, despite it only being in battle. There will be different weapons to pick between, and if you're playing an Olokai, you can also decide the armor you will spawn with. If you're more into custom battles, the units should be playable as well. Yes, there will be half trolls, and it will be a special unit for Harad. We are currently working on some different designs for the half troll, as it's depicted in various ways. The current approach is to have it look more humanoid than the more troll-like creature we usually see depicted. The half-troll will be bulkier and taller than the average man, but smaller than a troll. There will be some custom armor and weapons for it that will make it a threat on the battlefield, but nothing like the Olokai we know and fear. You cannot be a half-troll in the sandbox campaign but you can be in story mode, just like the regular trolls. We really want to have giant spiders in the mod, and we hope and believe it will be possible in the long run. There are some challenges we need to tackle though, such as animations, AI pathfinding, AI behavior, new sounds, and how the creature would interact in various situations. That being said, it will likely not be added until we reach the Mirkwood region which is still several years into the future. When we get further into development, we will know more and hopefully determine if we think it's possible to do, but right now we are very hopeful that it is. 
you will not be able to ride the spider like the goblins did in the battle for Middle Earth. Yes, there will be walks in the mod and it will be rideable mount. There will also be several unit types that uses the walks. There will both be the walks from the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. The walks from the Lord of the Rings will look different however, as the majority of the team didn't like the design in the movies. Eventually there will also be white walks from the far north that will be used by Gundabad and the remnants of Angmar. We will do what we can to make the walks able to attack in combat. We believe it's possible to pull off, so it still looks good. It will just take some time to do. The walks from Isengard will be available in the first release. No, there won't be dragons in the mod. Neither Kodrakes nor fire-breathing ones. First of all, they don't really belong in the time frame of the sandbox campaign. And secondly, as stated in our FAQ, we won't add flying creatures, which brings us to the next creature. The fell beasts are very popular among Lord of the Rings fans, but certainly we don't plan to include it. We don't believe it's possible to add flying creatures in Bannerlord that would look actually good, at least not in combat. Even if we did invest the time and the energy it took, we don't think it would be worth it. Of course, we would like to have them, but we don't believe it's possible to pull off well. And for that reason, we have decided not to include them. Yes, the Olafons will be in the mod and currently Janus from the team is working on it. There will be Haradrim units on top of the creature. They will mainly use bow and arrows, but there will also be a few javelin throwers on top of the mighty creature. Its trample damage will be huge and it will also swing its gigantic tusks from side to side to deal damage. Units will likely not dismount from the Oliphant during battle and new units will likely not mount it either. If the Mahud controlling the beast dies, the Oliphant will run amok though there are elements to that we might want to discuss further when we begin to implement the model. It's undecided if the player can control an Oliphant. The Oliphants will be slightly smaller than the ones in the movies. This is mainly for the gameplay and for balance reasons. However, it will be very huge still and I don't think people would notice it much. There are some challenges in terms of how the Oliphant would interact in Siege and such but also in terms of animations and so on, so it will take some time to add it in the mod. We do plan to include it in the first release however, so you can look forward to that. The Great Beast will be in the mod. It's a creature also depicted in the Divide and Conquer submod. The unit there is based on a model made by Games Workshop and we plan to include the same kind of unit. So there will be some orcs on top of the creature that will throw javelins and shoot arrows. The creature will likely do a lot of trample damage, so the player should avoid getting hit by one of these mighty creatures. The creature will also be used to pull the great battering ram Grond that we see in the third movie. Grond will be used in certain situations if Mordor besieges Minas Tirith. This creature will also be in the first release. No, the Watcher will not be in the mod, as you probably know, it's located at the west gate of Moria, so it's a lot of work to add it if it's only present in one scene. At the same time, it's a huge undertaking in terms of animations, AI behavior, etc. It is truly an interesting creature, but sadly, we don't plan to include it. Yes, the Balrog from Moria, known as Durin Spain, will be in the mod. There won't be other Balrogs in the sandbox world, but they will likely be possible to add in custom battle in case you want to fight several Balrogs at the same time. The fire and smoke on the Balrog would be made out of particles. The Balrog will only use the fiery sword from the movies and not the whip. How the Balrog will function is still being discussed. It could serve as a boss-like creature you would have to face if you besiege Moria, but it would also have an important purpose related to the fellowship in the sandbox. One thing is certain though, the main faction quest for the Dwarves is to reclaim Moria and the Balrog will be some sort of obstacle in that quest. The Great Eagles won't be in the mod as it's a flying creature as well. We might want to feature their home on the campaign map in some way, perhaps not a location you can visit, 
but maybe just a small icon showing the eagle's eerie. We have discussed if we could feature the great eagles as some sort of background creature to improve the look of some scenes, but it won't be able to fight in battles. We see the stone giants appear in the first Hobbit film, and some of you might know the mountain giant from Battle for Middle Earth as well. We don't plan to include either of them in the mod. The size of the creature is somewhat problematic, and we don't think it would be added in an appealing way. At the same time, giants play a very small role in the world of Tolkien, and some fans even doubt it's an actual creature in the world. Yes, we plan to include Gollum in the mod, however, his role is still undetermined. We have still not decided if he should be able to fight, or if he should only play a role on the campaign map. Whatever it will end up being, it will without doubt be related to the Fellowship and the fate of the Ring. We currently don't have any plans adding the skin changes, that meaning bearnings that are able to turn themselves into bears or other animals. However, we are willing to explore the options when we get closer to the region that will feature them. We regard them as rather low priority right now though. Since not all bearnings can change into animals, it will likely be rather few lords from the faction that can. If we do in fact include such a feature, there will be a skin changer companion available as well. It will not be possible to play as a skin changer, but they might be able to play as Bayon or Grimbeon in story mode and try out the feature themselves, though nothing is decided yet. If skin changers are added, they will only be able to turn into a bear to make it more consistent and easier to balance. The size of such a bear is not decided either. We hope that we will get some experience when we make the animations for the walks that could provide useful for such a feature. Personally, I hope we will add them at some point, as I think it's an interesting feature that could give flavor not only to the gameplay, but also the whole region in terms of lore and areas that players might want to explore. The Wereworms appear shortly in The Hobbit. As hopefully all of you can guess, they will not be in the mod, for a lot of obvious reasons. We don't think the Bannerlord mechanics are suited for such a creature in any way. Speaking of both size and how it digs tunnels beneath the earth, that's simply not possible and nor a thing we want to spend time adding to the mod. Giant bats fall into the same criteria as other flying creatures. We won't add them either. As said, for the fell beast, we don't think it will be done in a visual appealing way for Bannerlord. And there are lots of other worries that comes with flying creatures, such as pathfinding, collision with objects, new animations, etc. Ends will of course be in the mod and will also be part of the first release. You can see some of the concept art done here. You can play as an end in the sandbox, but you can play in story mode. We will try and make some variations for the ends, so that they depict different types of trees and don't all look identical. In terms of damage taken, the ends won't bleed, but instead some wood chips effect will be added. We have discussed if there should be fire arrows or something alike that you could set fire to the ends and deal extra damage to them. But we would likely have to discuss it further when we have a done end model. There are currently no planned weapons for the ends. We will likely see what's possible when we begin to code. We could end up having ends throwing giant rocks, which were probably quite terrifying to face as an orc. In the Hobbit films, we see various mounts being used, such as rams, pigs and elks, but neither of those mounts will be available in the mod. It's mostly because many of the team members are not very happy with the Hobbit films, nor the art direction it took. Someone might add them in a sub-mod, however. Yes, there will be ponies in the mod. They play a rather important role in the first book, and would be hard to forget. The ponies will be especially used in the Shire and Breland, but will also be available a few other places. The ponies will mainly function as beasts of burden, but can also be a way that a dwarf player can get a mount. There will be no cavalry unit of this type, however. And that concludes the video. Thank you for watching, remember to like and subscribe, and also check out 
the official channel for Kingdoms of Arda. In the future, there will be trailers and other content on that channel. So feel free to check it out.